Hello and welcome to the GeoRGB community. This is the first lesson of the course QGIS Geomapping Masterclass. I am Marcel, a hydrogeologist, and I'm the main instructor of this course. Just a heads up, by signing up for the course at discourse.online, you'll gain early access to the lessons. Right now, if you check out the website, you'll find that the lessons two and three are already available for those who've subscribed. Before starting with the installation of the most updated QGIS version, I would like to mention a couple of things. The first thing is that you can have in your computer different versions of QGIS. In this case, I have the version 3.16 and the version 3.22. And now I'm going to install the most updated one. It means that in your computer, you can have different versions of QGIS. Then you can use the one you need for your project. And the second one, if you want to remove completely QGIS from your computer, you can go to the GeoRGB YouTube channel and then watch this video tutorial. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can remove completely QGIS and then install the most updated uh, QGIS version from scratch. Now we are ready to start with the installation. We want to download QGIS from the official website. To do that one, we are going to go to the GeoRGB community website at discourse.online. I'm going to leave the link at the video description. Then go to the tab resources. And here you have a link directly to the official website. Just click here, then press the button download now. And here you can select the system you have. In my case, I'm going to select Windows. And as you can see, we have two different versions. The most updated one, that in this case is the 3.36, and the most stable one, that is the 3.34. My recommendation is to install the most stable version, that in this case is the 3.34. Then just click here and wait until the installer is completely downloaded. Now you can press on show all downloads, select the QGIS with the right button, show in folder, select the QGIS and install. Now we can follow the instructions on the screen. Next, accept. Next, and next, install. Now press finish, and we are ready to use the version 3.34 of QGIS. Go here, look at your apps, go to QGIS, and here we have the new version. Just click here, and select the one you want to use. In this case, we are going to use this one. Now we can maximize the screen and talk about the different sections of the QGIS interface. Are you still using spreadsheets for soil and groundwater analysis? If so, it's like you're operating with technology from the Mesozoic era. In that case, you're basically a dinosaur in the digital age. Are you ready to step into the AI era and leverage cutting edge tech? It might be the perfect moment to explore GeoRGB's revolutionary tool for lab sample analysis. This online application is a game changer, streamlining your process to slash hours and manpower in report generation, while dramatically cutting down on human error in data analysis. Simplify your workflow with technology designed to make your job easier. Discover how simple it is to elevate your lab analysis game. Click the link in the video description or head over to the GeoRGB community website at geescourse.online. Navigate to the Geoscience app section Select GeoSample Pro Analyzer and dive into our easy-to-follow tutorial video. Your journey to smarter lab work begins here. All this section at the top is known as the toolbars. And each toolbar is limited by the double dotted line. As you can see over here, this bar goes from here to here. And if you want to know what is exactly the name of that toolbar, just put the cursor on the top of the bar 
at the label it will appear. For example, this one, this is the project toolbar. If you go here to the top, this one is the menu toolbar. And for example, this one is the digitizing toolbar. By clicking in this section with the right button of your mouse, these options will be appear. If we move on on the toolbars, here you can check the toolbar you want to see on the interface. For example, if I don't want to see the web toolbar, that is this one over here, I can take it. Then now the toolbar disappear. I want to add it again, then I can check again. Then at the end, you decide what you want to have in the interface of the toolbar. Also, you can access to the toolbars through the tab view. If you click on view and then go to toolbars, you have the same information over here. The next section are the panels. The panels are located at the left side of the interface, but also at the right side. Now let's go to be focused on the left side. Here is where we are going to add the majority of the panels. And at this point, we have the browser panel and also the layers panel. But if you want to add more panels, just as before, you can click here, go to the option panels, and here you can add the panels you want to add. For example, we can add this panel over here and it appears over there. We want to take it the same as before. Then we can uncheck the box and the panels disappear. Then we want to add the panel for statistics. Then we check the box is here. Also, we can remove it, the panel just clicking over here. Again, you can access the option for the panels through the tab view. Click on, on view, go to panels, and here you have the same options. Now, if we move on on the right side of the interface, we have the processing toolbox panel and also the results viewer panel. The majority of the panels are going to be added to the left side of the interface, but some of them are going to be in the right side. Also, a very few of them are going to be added at the middle. For example, the log message panel is added here at the middle, and also the temporal controller panel is also be added over here. One important thing is if you cannot see the processing toolbox, that is because you didn't check it, the box at the plugins. Then go to plugins, manage plugins. Here, look for processing. And then look for processing uh, plugin. Is this one over here, processing? For example, if you don't have this box checked, as you can see, this panel is going to be uh, disappear. And then when you try to add that panel, let me close this one. The panel is not here. Then you have to go again to plugins, manage, look for the processing, check the box. And once you check the box and close, the panel is going to be available again. Processing. That is a very important thing because you have a lot of tools here that we are going to be using. The toolbars and the panels can move and can make bigger, can customize in a different way. For example, if we take uh, this toolbar over here, we can move over here and leave right there, or we can move inside the toolbars by putting here in a different line or even moving to a different location in the toolbar. For example, here, here, that is totally customized, right? The same happened with the panels. The panels can be smaller, can be bigger. You can adjust according to your necessities. Wide and high, right? Also here, if we add the... Uh, Result viewer panel, you can make the same modifications here like this and also like this. 
But also, for example, if you want to have the layer panels in the right side, you can move it. Just press uh, the bottom left of your mouse and uh, hold it and move to this side and leave here on the top. And now you have the panel over here. But you can have also the panel, the layer panel, as an independent, like this one, and move over here. But if you want to add again to the to any of these uh, sides of the interface, just move over here. But you can also have the panels in a tabs. Like for example, if we leave this one here, now we have one tab for layer and one tab for browser. Then if you want to have the same as before, just take this one out as a small window, as you can see. Now you can add this one to the bottom. That's it. Now make this one bigger and you have the same as before. Then the interface is totally customized according your necessities, according what you want to have on the screen, right? The next two sections is the recent projects. That's the projects you have a safe in your computer related with QGIS. And the next one is the news from QGIS. Now, if we open, for example, this project, we have these windows over here. These windows is known as a map cavanas. The two last sections are the status bar, is this one over here, where we can see the characteristics of the project, like the coordinates, the scale, and other information. And also the locator bar, this one over here. The last thing that we are going to see today is the general options for the software. If you go to settings, options, then here in this pop-up windows, you can also manipulate this one and also how big is this windows. If we go to general, here you can change some parameters here for the user first and uh, translation. Also, you can decide the currency, the type of data you want to see, and etc. And also here we can change the the theme of QGIS, we can put the night mapping, for example, the icon size, and also the, the font that is using, and uh, etc. Then, for example, if we press OK, now we close and open QGIS again, we are going to see, for example, the night theme. Let me show you here. Go. We are going to open this one. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you on the next lesson.